Welcome back to JW's Backyard. I've got a Predator 212 here. This came off of my Nitrosco cart. I uh, took it off so I could port the head. It seems like it's struggling to breathe a little bit at the high RPMs. So while I had it off, I figured I would make a video of the four most common reasons, at least in my experience, that a Predator 212 or a similar engine wouldn't start after a governor removal. And now these are all things I've experienced throughout the years. I've got, uh, I think, eight of these engines now, whether it's a Predator or the Tillotson. And these are just things I've come across. So we'll start off with the what I would consider the most common reason. Uh, but first, we're going to get the side cover off. So most of the time when you take out the governor, your cam comes out when you take the side cover off. So one of the most common things to happen is once you take that cam out, the tappets here that hold your push rods in, so you got your little tappets here, they drop down and take pressure off of the push rods. So the push rod falls out of its seat up here in the head. So we'll take the we'll take the valve cover off and more than likely those push rods are not going to be in their seats anymore. So I've had this happen multiple times. It almost it happens almost every time. I've been lucky a few times that they don't fall out of their seat, but this is probably the most common reason that your predator is not going to start after you remove the governor because if you had that cam out, these tap little tappets fall down and the push rods fall out of their seats and you're not going to have any valve control after that. So, of course, like we thought, when we took that side cover off and the cam was no longer pushing on the tappets, the, the push rods were able to fall out of their seats on the rocker arm. Now, this is a super simple fix. Uh, one thing to note that this engine does not have lash caps on the top of the valves here, but some of the engines do. Now, I know I've got a Hemi has lash caps, so that would be something to watch out for, is if your engine has lash caps, make sure that when the pressure came off of the rocker arms, those lash caps didn't fall down into the engine. But this engine doesn't have lash caps, so we don't have to worry about it. But all you do is you put some pressure on the spring here, try to move this rocker arm back over. And we'll just put some pressure on the spring and we will slide this rocker arm back in its place and make sure that the push rod is back up in the seat. So, so you see our push rod is back in its seat and we'll just do the same thing for the other side. Now, of course, this is the non-hemi head. If you have a hemi predator, the concept's still the same. The head will just look a little different. This, of course, is what the rocker arms on the hemi head look like. And you just compress the spring and put the push rod back in its seat. Now, yours won't look identical to this because this is uh, has upgraded springs and uh, retainers, but here are the little lash caps I was talking about. So that little bitty thing sits right on top of the valve. So if your engine has that, make sure that you didn't lose those into down into the engine. All right, so the next common reason that your engine may not start after removing the governor is if you had the cam out, like before, you didn't put it back in time. So there's a dot right here on the cam, and there's a dot here on the crank, and those dots have to line up for this to be in time. So what we'll have to do is we'll take our cam back out, and we will rotate the engine with the pull start. We rotated the engine so that the crank has the little dot on this side 
closest to the cam. And now what we're gonna do is we're gonna make sure the dot on the cam and the dot on the crank line up. Now you have to be really careful with this because you can think you're lined up and not be. It can be off a little tooth or so, so you may have to rotate it a little bit. And these are not straight cut gears. They have a slight slant. So sometimes it's a little off when you think you're dead on. So we will get the cam in its groove. And you see, I thought I was on, but those dots are not lined up. So let's rotate this a little bit and see if we can get lined up. All right, so off just one tooth, but now we see the dot on the crank and the dot on the cam are lined up. And the third reason that your engine may not run or may run very poorly after removing the governor is that you did not lubricate it properly before reassembling it. So what I often do is I'll take a can of brake clean and I'll spray the whole engine down inside and out um, to get any debris from the gasket material that I scraped off or any uh, metal shavings because I usually tap the hole for the governor arm to run a bolt through it uh, to set up the throttle and I don't want any metal shavings floating around in the engine so I'll clean it out real good. Well this happened just recently I sprayed it down real good just threw it back together uh, was going to leave it dry to let the RTV seal and not let the oil uh, seep into the the gasket material and didn't even think about it and went to crank the engine you know put oil in it afterwards went to crank the engine and it just felt like it, something was dragging like I was uh like I was pulling against sandpaper well that's that's what it was is I didn't lubricate it properly and it was just too much friction inside the engine and the clearances were too tight for that oil that I put in afterwards to seep in that you know it was it was rubbing metal on metal and the engine just couldn't get going and all I do is just take a little bit of oil same oil that you're going to put in afterwards is fine uh, lubricate the end of the cam here also lubricate the top side of the cam here so they're lubricated in their little housings and i usually pour a little oil over the crank just to make sure that anything that uh, needs to be lubricated before reassembling is lubricated and then you should be good to go and lastly this is probably a less common issue but it is something that i've had happen before uh actually happened on the first predator i ever owned uh had actually got the engine already modified and they had already done some head work to it it had a cam in it and it had an issue where it would run perfectly most of the time crank up fine but then sometimes i would go to crank it and it felt like it was locked up well, it turns out uh, it was a, when I opened up the engine, it was a little washer floating around in the engine. And when it would lock up, I guess the washer was getting caught up in the gears here or getting pinched in something. It's a wonder that the engine didn't have any serious damage from it. But uh, after learning more about these engines and modifying them over the years, I figured out why that washer was still in the engine and it's because there is a thin little washer i mean and i don't think this is actually the washer that's normally back there this looks a little too thick i searched through all my extra parts i take out of these engines and i just couldn't find the the super thin one that's usually behind the governor back there but on the little arm where the governor rides back behind it there is a little thin washer and if you didn't know it was there or weren't very observant, you could easily miss that washer because it's so flat and it blends in. And it's quite hard to get off actually. So, um, but normally the washer sits right behind the gear for the governor and sits right on this little post here.
and you can see it sits right down there and the washer that is normally missed is a little darker and blends in so just something to be mindful of make sure that you remove all the components of that governor before you put that back together and lastly get out there and have some fun if you've got a project sitting out in the yard you haven't ridden in a while go ahead and get out there and get on it